Today we're talking about fostering children that have been sexually abused. It's Friday, September 20th, and the conversation starts now. Right here on Fossil Black. <laughs> sexually abused and how we as foster parents can um, maybe do a little bit better job in working with them and to help with some of their recovery and dealing with that type of trauma um, but school started yes. finally yeah. are your boys in school boys are back in school sports are going strong good and, and everybody's willing to go oh yeah oh that, well that's good in my house I they like school but I think it's because, you know, in the summer, I think they do all that extra school and stuff like that. And um, so they're at school. We don't have all of them in school yet, but by November, everybody except for the baby and our seven-year-old will be in school. The seven-year-old home. But um, everybody else will be in school, so I'll have a lot of time. time. Yeah. To work here. With you. Yeah. At the Luster Life. <laughs> It'll be our full-time job. So, what's in the news today? Well, speaking of being back in school, yeah. do you remember last summer before we went on hiatus, we talked about the school in Pennsylvania that was threatening foster oh, care for, do I ever. for unpaid lunch balances? Yes, I hope we have some good news on this story. Well, so that created quite a controversy. I can imagine. It kind of went back and forth for a little bit. Well, end of July, yeah. the school district said, hey, we kind of messed that up. Yeah, I would say so. So they have agreed to um, accept the donors because there were some donors that came forward and at first they weren't going to accept those donors. Um, so they've agreed for there to be donations for those unpaid balances. Right. And they have agreed to let the children participate in the community eligibility food program by the USDA uh -huh. so that all kids are being able to eat without there being an issue of unpaid lunch balances. Oh, that's good. That yeah, sounds like it's a, a good thing. You know, the thing that I think about when I think about this story is one, I think about that parent who's going through some medical stuff and maybe they their income changed significantly because um, maybe there was some type of medical issue. And so they just can't afford to do all they need to do mm -hmm. plus school lunch or the single parent who is doing everything he or she can do mm -hmm. for their kids, and the school lunch is just one more thing, um, and that bothers me. Right, and it bothered me that there was the threat of foster care to these families, because yeah. that's, not, that's not what foster care is designed for. Right, yeah, we all go through struggles right. and ups and downs mm -hmm. in our lives, and, and things always get affected. But the other thing that bothers me is we do take kids into foster care for neglect and in actuality it was kind of those schools neglecting those kids because they had plenty of food and they had um, the, right. the, the food to give them and not feeding them that really bothers because you know they're playing PE and they're doing art and they're doing school and they're burning calories and I'm sure they're just hungry yeah I, I would guess so the after school activities, I mean, you're going all day without eating food, and right. then all of a sudden you're doing that also. Once they get home, I'd say they're ready to eat. Yeah, and, and that even puts more strain on the family. Right. When well, we come. More strain on the body. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. When we come back today, we're going to talk about fostering sexually abused children. Trash bag boots for foster kids, no more. Every foster kid deserves luggage. Go to fostertv.net 
and donate today. Every $5 buys a bag for a foster youth in care. Foster TV is a head fra production. Only at Foster TV. sexual encounter was non-consensual. Uh, one in 19 girls report that before the age of 18 they were either sexually harassed or sexually abused. One in 53 boys uh, say that they were sexually harassed or sexually abused before the age of 18. I think that one in 53 probably gets me the most because you know a lot of that is people just don't report. Boys are less likely to report that. Yeah, so boys are like less likely to say anything, and then also to embarrassment and all of that stuff, and so they're less likely. So I'm sure that that number is probably a lot closer than one in 53. But in, in all of that being said at the beginning, the likelihood of you bringing a kid in that has been sexually harassed or sexually abused is probably pretty likely there's there, there's a pretty good chance that that's that has happened and so we've talked about you know what to prepare for and um, systems to put in your house and all of this stuff as you take kids in that have experienced this trauma but what we haven't talked about and what we want to talk about today is what can we do to parent these children um, that might help them find some healing in their trauma or some closure or whatever they're searching for. But the first thing I want to start out with, because my executive producer told me that I have to make sure that we know this, is you cannot pry. It is not your job to start this conversation. However, when I'm driving in the car and I have my kids in the car with me, a lot of times they'll just start talking about things and that's when these kind of conversations start so what do i do you listen 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 to listen not listen to respond so okay. if you're listening to them you're just letting them tell their story yep. you're not asking questions you're not asking for further information you're not asking for any details that they haven't provided you're just listening right and sometimes we might know information from the worker like when they were placed mm -hmm. don't plant those seeds if the right. worker has told you something that they haven't mentioned don't say well did this happen mm -hmm. too right um that's not your place to do that is right. that correct that's right and so you want the story to be their story okay that's so i think that that's probably the the biggest thing that that we need to do is just listen and then once we listen that's the next step is what the next step you want to do is you want to journal all of that you want to write down absolutely everything you can remember about the conversation uh -huh. because that's important for you to be able to tell the case, talk to the caseworker about that or the therapist or whatever the next step may be but if you don't have that information then it's lost so if you're listening to listen, that helps you to be able to journal that information and to retain that information so that you can get it to the next person. Okay. For me, I feel like this conversation isn't something that just happens the next day. I feel like it's something that you almost need to plan, you know, like after school every Thursday, you guys just go for a drive, you get ice cream, you hang out at the park or something. Because I just make it a yeah. 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 Eventually, mm -hmm. they'll build that bond and be able to, you know, voice their opinion out. And it better. builds the trust, yes. too. The, the actual trust. When we come back, we're going to talk more about parenting sexually abused children. Trash bag moves for foster kids no more. Every foster kid deserves luggage. Go to fostertv.net and donate today. Every $5 buys a bag for a foster youth in care. Foster TV is a head fra production. Only at Foster TV. Foster Life.
life. So we're talking about um, parenting sexually abused children. And one of the things that my producer just made very clear that I need to tell uh, everybody is never, ever, ever make a promise that you're not going to tell anybody um, because that's what we're going to talk about next. Um, a lot of times, as you're talking with these kids, they'll tell you that it was taken care of. And in their mind, they might feel like it was taken care of, but I think really your next step would be to call the caseworker to see if anything needs to be hotlined and kind of come up with your game plan. Is that correct? Right, right. And I think another thing that we want to point out about the promise not to tell anybody, right. I think it's safe to tell the kids, I'm, we're not going to talk about this with our friends or our neighbors. Right. I think they need to know that, but I think it is important for them to know that we do have an obligation to talk to the caseworker about it. Right. Make the plan. And do you include them in talking with the caseworker about it just so they don't feel like they're blindsided, or well, what would you do? I think you give them the choice, and it depends, I mean, you know the child that you're working with best. So. Mm -hmm. If you feel that that child um, can articulate that they want to be involved or if they're going to be scared to be involved or, or that sort of thing. But I, I think if, if you can, right. include them in that conversation about talking to the caseworker. And then they may want to be involved in that conversation with the caseworker. Mm, yeah, just always make sure they have that option to be there. Yeah. Then the other point that I want to bring up, because a lot of times they'll say, oh, you need to get with the therapist right away. And I think that that needs to be a conversation between the kid and the worker. And we're basically co-parenting with, with the worker. And so we need to decide that this is the time because if your kid or youth or teen or whoever it may be has not built that relationship with their therapist, that can actually be very traumatic to have to share that kind of um, uncomfortable information. Well, and we've talked about, you know, on many shows, we talk about how kids, you know, experience so many moves. Right. And so oftentimes with those moves comes multiple therapists. And so if they have not had the opportunity to build that therapist-child relationship, right. it can be almost traumatic to retell that story to somebody they're not comfortable telling it to. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to cause them any more trauma or whatnot. Um, so I think... You know, what I'm, what I'm hearing is, number one, we definitely need to see if it's been hotline. If it hasn't been hotline, we need to get that hotline immediately. Then secondly, we need to determine where we go from there. What's, what's our game plan? But in the meantime, if you have that documented and we're not ready to go to the therapist yet, you're always going to have that right. because you've documented everything. I'm gonna tell you one thing that I learned when I was at a residential facility that just seems really weird to me, and they told us, especially in kids that have been sexually abused, if they have a bad dream, a nightmare, and they wake up in the middle of the night and you have to go in to calm them down, and they start telling the story of this nightmare, even if it doesn't make any sense to you at all, whatsoever, you just think that it's just uh, whatever, you also want to journal down as many details and as much of everything that you can um, find. And I didn't know that a lot of times um, a therapist can actually figure out even who the accuser mm -hmm. was or even where the incident happened. Or a timeline. Um, or a timeline. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, Just based on that dream? Mm-hmm. Huh. The, the instance that they used in our training was uh, this girl kept talking about a saddle and a blanket and everything and come to find out after working with this therapist in years and years, you know, mm -hmm. working with her, that her abuse had happened in a barn. Uh, and mm -hmm. it was all, he got all that information mm -hmm. from these the dream. dreams mm -hmm. that she was having and we're not equipped for that. Right but it can really be a good tool for those um, young people mm -hmm. um, when they tell those dreams to journal it all mm -hmm. out and then make sure that you know you keep it and when they're ready, they can take it to their therapist and they can work through that stuff. And I think that that's really important as well. Absolutely. And the more information that you have, even if it's, I mean, even if it takes a year to gather that information, when it's time for them, whenever it's the right time for them to be with their therapist and talk through this,
and work through that, that's more information that they have. Right. And when, they, when they're talking to you and you're letting them um, give their information, I think some of the things that we tend to say is, um, it's okay, you can talk to me. Um, and I use that a lot. Also, I use the, I'm a safe place. Safe place. You can tell me anything. Um, you're okay. And um, I'm going to be here for you. That type of thing. Um, and so, uh, giving that, that type of encouragement is okay. We just don't want to lead them or make them feel like they have to share more than they want to share. If they just abruptly cut off and move on, then just go check on them, but don't try to get them to finish their, their story. Let them tell it in their time frame. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I agree. Yeah, I think it's so important. Uh, when we come back, we're gonna be wrapping up today, right here on the Foster Live. Missouri tomorrow. And so if you're even in the area, you want to come see Cindy and I will be in Archie. And Daniel, one of our my stories, he'll be there. He'll be in the dunk tank. I'm going to dunk him and we'll be out there raising money for Foster TV and doing the stuff that we do. Um, if you're in the Springfield area, you can come down and see my boys at the C Street Market um, and they'll have a Foster TV booth. And they love it when the viewers come by and see them and buy shirts or whatever the case may be, and they'll be down there all day on Saturday as well. So the thing with the sexually abused children, those numbers, one, I feel like we gotta be doing something better. Mm -hmm. But number two, I think we've seen in the My Stories, the people that were open to listening, working with them, having an open mind. Mm -hmm. um, those foster families are the ones in the My Stories that have been sexually abused, always go to. Right. They always say that that was the person that helped them, that was the person that mentored them, that's the one I call mom, mm -hmm. that's the one you know that's part of my family. Because those people listen to their story. Yeah, without judgment. Right. Without judgment. And you know what I think? is sad to me is I have girls that I've interviewed and they talk about like if a father sexually abused them or a family member and how sometimes people feel like they brought that on and they were like 9 and 12 when this happened like kid, little kid and so I think it's very important to always listen without any Prejudice, judgment, open mind, yep, and just let them bend. So, do you got any good news today, Kristen? Yep. Uh, do you remember Lindy Solar? Oh yeah, we did a my story on her. Matter of fact, it airs this Tuesday. Yep. So um, this Tuesday at seven, Lindy Solar. Yes. So what about Lindy Solar? Well, she let us know that after five years of working her way through the KYAC Council. Yeah. Um, she moved up from an ambassador to a member at a large, or member at large to secretary and now president. Oh, wow. Right. Way to go, Lindy. Yeah, so that's the, uh, that would be the, what, like the foster system. Kansas Youth Advisory Council. Yeah, the Advisory Council. And we are very proud of you and we're excited for you to share your story. And thank you for sharing that information with Foster TV. Yeah. And um, congratulations to you. It's weird. These my stories, they these people become, I guess because their stories are so deep, they become like friends yeah. to us and we, we do care about them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we continue to hear from them. Right. 
All of them. It's like Kayla that filmed last mm -hmm. week. When Kayla's going through something, she reaches out to me now and she tells me what she's going through and she asks me for advice and she, so she has become kind of our um, satellite daughter. Right. And so we give her, you know, right. help and we give her advice and we, you know, that's great to because I mean, that's what we're here to do. Yeah. You know? And we had another, my story, another gal that reached Crystal. out. Yeah. Crystal reached mm -hmm. out to us when she was going through some stuff yeah. and Daniel's always, yeah. in contact mm -hmm. with us. So these are people that not only are sharing their story, but they're becoming a part of mm -hmm. our, our team. And that's right. always good to have them as well. So congratulations to Lindy. When we come back on Monday, there has been several new federal mandated guidelines that every foster home, resource home, kinship home in the United States has to follow. It's federally mandated. And we're going to break that all down for you when we come back this Monday on Foster Live. All right, see you later. Help support Foster TV. Go to fostertv.net and make a donation today. Foster TV's My Story is a head from production. Only on Foster TV.